All right, so here we are with the 67 Jeep. Now it's been a few months or so since we've worked on it. Um, originally we just wanted to go through the parts and pieces of this rig and make sure that um, everything was up for the task of firing it up. Obviously we don't want to just jump in here and try and crank it and start it up and we can really damage a lot of things. So we're working through this uh, engine methodically, I guess, in a way that we won't destroy anything. Now this vehicle has sat for, um, at least in this family's possession, it's sat for 10 years and it's really unknown how long it sat before that, but suffice it to say it hasn't run a whole lot in its lifetime because it only has 6,000 original miles. And being from the Midwest and looking at this rig, that's um, very believable. Um, it looks like it was obviously originally a military rig and then it was sold along the way, um, painted white and decommissioned. You can kind of see Department of Defense in the door. Um, somewhat but pretty interesting rig everything's built pretty heavy um, you know if you did watch our previous video there going through all the uh, the watertight distributor and coil setup and plug wires and you know it's definitely made to be submerged it has this big old generator on it and stuff that's uh, um, pretty science fiction style but anyway today we just have a few things to do and we'll be um, getting ready to fire it up. So with that, let's jump right in and see if we can get it to crank tonight. All right, so jumping in here, we're gonna go ahead and pop this valve cover off and turn the engine over by hand and make sure all the valve train is working like it's supposed to. Obviously, after something sits, an intake valve that's open, exhaust valve that's open could allow moisture to get in. We don't want any valves that are stuck, so our piston would come up and hit those. Now, in our last video, we did um, pull all the spark plugs out and pour some oil uh, down the cylinders and rotate the engine over and it seemed pretty good um, but we just want to make sure that all that's working the way it's supposed to before we get too crazy Steve's down here working away at the uh, the oil pan and get the oil out of the thing I can't imagine it's had the oil changed too much in its life here with only having um, the mileage it has <laughs> What's the oil look like? Kind of sludgy. It's very, very thick. Yeah. Probably been down there a while. I'm reluctant to pour any sort of a cleaner down the engine, you know, as it seems like coming in the, the top here, it would run over the front and rear main seals and I wouldn't want to mess those up. Some engines you get lucky, like old tractor engines you poured in, it goes straight to the crankcase, but on this orientation, it would just kind of concern me running over the front and rear main seal if it were to warp those cause an issue there was it pretty clean Mag well, not too bad. Yeah. has a magnetic drain plug it looks pretty good it's not all you know like it's got any rust or any weird stuff on it kind of an interesting valve cover here um, center bolt style goes around and um, we do have another valve cover gasket for it. This one's all petrified and with the design, it's probably a good idea that we change that because I'm sure if we would start it, it would just pour oil as you can see. So anyway, I'm just gonna work through this thing, get this valve cover pulled off. All right, so getting the valve cover off. Try and lift it as straight off as as possible, not turn the valve cover and drop the dirt all in. And come on. There we go. So, pretty cool design on these. Oh, sorry about that. Knocking the light on my camera, man. Pretty cool design on these where they use, it looks like the same cam lobe for opposing valves. Overall, it looks like everything's pretty good. It's not all rusted up it even looks like it has what almost appears to be fresh oil relatively at the top of the engine um, so really there hasn't been a lot of moisture that's got in here which we are pretty encouraged by the carburetor originally as well you know it was wasn't all rusted up everything looks pretty good this looks like something with our fuel pump eccentric here the timing chain feels good and tight which makes me feel very confident about our mileage. So 
So that's pretty, uh, that's pretty awesome. So finishing up, having a look at our valve train here, it seems that all of our valves are opening. Poor Steve is down there cranking away, turning the engine over. Um, but everything looks pretty good. And again, just another look at this camshaft. Obviously, one lobe runs the intake and exhaust valve on um, each cylinder. So, you know, this is pretty unique. Usually you didn't see overhead um, cam stuff start hitting the scene until much later. You know, this being a 60s vehicle, really that wasn't popularized until, you know, the 80s and fuel injection era stuff. So this is pretty unique. Another unique piece is these are actually solid lifters. As you can see, obviously the cam lobe directly contacts the, uh, the rocker arm and that directly contacts the valve stem. So um, we might go through and have a look at our um, valve train, but just going through everything, nothing is exceedingly loose. It looks and feels all to be pretty within spec, at least to the point where it's gonna run and not cause any issues. But we're looking really good here. The fuel pump eccentric isn't stuck, so that's good. We got a, a diaphragm for that that we're going to go ahead and throw on there since all of our plastic and rubber stuff is pretty petrified at this point. But moving right along here, I'm very confident with our engine internals. So very happy to see this. So we're just working through changing the oil here and it's a uh, pretty interesting pulling the oil filter off, you know, giving further credence to the fact that it probably does only have 6,000 miles or so. That's definitely a throwback oil filter that I'm not familiar with. So definitely a classic unit there, but we got a, we got a Wix and we checked it out here. It looks like it's the same thread pitch and the O-rings in the same place. We're going to fill that up and run with it, but I definitely just wanted to make note of that nostalgic piece. You don't see stuff like that every day. Now since we're on the topic of oil, I'm taking a look here again at our valve train. You can see this is what's called a flat tappet valve train design. So um, most modern cars run an overhead cam, a roller um, design, and basically it uh, lessens your, your friction between your uh, metal to metal pieces. So in doing that, they've pulled um, what's called zinc out of motor oil, and really the point of zinc is to soften the blow and kind of create a sacrificial layer between these metal-to-metal -metal parts and pieces that are commonly found in older vehicles. Now with our uh, zinc oil additive here, we've also gone ahead and picked up some of this lead substitute. So I'm not sure on this particular engine, but a lot of engines back in the 60s were manufactured without hardened valve seats because they had lead in the gasoline and so you really didn't need it but um, as they went through they went to unleaded fuel and that's what we all run today and basically if you don't have hardened valve seats what that would do is um, the surface where your exhaust valve would meet um, its seat on the uh, inside your chamber here on the cylinder head it would basically wear that away and um, you know you'd have some valve train failures as we went through so i'm not sure on this particular engine but assuming because it's from 1967 or so um, we're just not going to take um, any chances here and we're going to go ahead and add in a lead substitute now we're cooking right along this thing was probably not going to last a whole lot longer you can see it was completely petrified on the outside a few heat cycles and i'm sure it would have been all cracked up on the inside as well. And a pretty modern piece there, really. You know, that's how we do everything now, but back then most of it was cork. I'm sure they went to, to great lengths to make this all good and watertight. So we've done this about, um, luckily we only did it a couple times before we got smart and did it right, but um, obviously uh, this, this is probably a new old stock gasket and maybe they were more pliable back in the day, but um, being a rubber piece, it, it either shrunk or it's designed to be pretty tight, but um, it really worked out for us after we did it wrong the first time to um, run all of this on here first and then have this nice straight run to do our stretch to get it across. Because the first time we ended over here and it was like, man, our gasket's like way too short, but um, in doing all this and taking out all the slack here, we were able to get that on but definitely that was a unique experience that um, you know there's there's probably a better way to do it than how we did it but she's on there and ready to go back on
Ta-da, there we go. So getting ready to put oil in the engine here, we got some 1030 and we're just going to go ahead and put our zinc additive directly into our motor oil so that we can shake that up and get that um, good and blended before we put it in the engine. All right, so getting started here, if you um, recall from our previous video, what we uh, noticed about the radiator was that it was completely empty. Now, um, I'm assuming someone drained it. It could have leaked out or something of that degree. So we're going to do some addressing here of the cooling system. Um, but on these vehicles that sit for a long time, what seems like I find more often than not is the thermostat is uh, rusted and stuck in place. And that's about the last thing we want to have happen when we go to fire this thing up. We don't want it to overheat or anything of that nature. So Steve pounded away here and was able to get this thermostat housing off. It's kind of a son of a gun with this three stud design here. And you can see why it's pretty rusted up. So I'm not sure we might have to take this whole deal off and pull it off from the back. We're going to look at our new one and see how this is assembled. Of course, obviously, we don't want to destroy any of our parts and pieces because they're pretty hard to come by. So, um, hopefully, we don't have to take our whole housing off. We'll see. All right, so taking a look at our thermostat, it's definitely kind of a unique design. It was seized in here pretty good, but we just put a screwdriver right on our end here and tapped it around. It's going to make a liar out of me. There we go. And loosen that guy right up and it seems like this one wasn't seized um, interestingly enough we do have coolant hanging down there in the block but you know maybe boil that and see if that still works they are kind of kind of a rare piece i'm sure but uh, we do have a new one here and it's labeled uh, towards radiator so we can't stick that on backwards it looks like it fits and our new gasket fits so um, even though our old one was probably okay, you know, again, like I mentioned earlier, it would just be really a shame to get it fired up and overheat it uh, just for the sole fact that this was rusted shut. So I think we're going to be in good shape. Might as well put a new one in anyway because we're here, um, clean everything up. It doesn't look like we disturbed our bottom gasket. The coolant in here looks pretty good and, and green. It doesn't look like it's all kind of gone acidic on us too bad. So um, hopefully our radiator is good, we'll soon find out, but we'll get this all um, buttoned back up with our new gasket and I think we'll be good to go here. So right now we're filling up the cooling system, we got some 50-50 here and um, basically I got my thermostat housing bolts still loose. Uh, reason being is I want to be able to burp the air out of the engine. Now if you've ever dropped in a new engine and just filled the radiator and had a sealed cooling system. Um, you're probably uh, fighting your temperature running away on you when you were trying to run that engine. And um, reason being really that you get an air bubble trapped up in the uh, engine. You really don't want to do that. You don't want to burn anything up. So um, oftentimes if you have a heater, you can pull one of those heater hoses off, hold it up high, and actually put a funnel in that and fill from that point. But in this case, we're very limited. We actually only, again, have our our thermostat housing here so we're just going to let that um, bleed down I don't want to mess with any of this in case it's petrified and it's a pretty aggressive angle so once we start seeing a little bit of coolant um, come out from this point we'll get this all um, bolted down and finish filling it up and we'll be pretty confident that our engine block is pretty full of coolant we're not going to have any hot spots or damage the engine when we go to fire it all right, so now we got the cooling system filled to the point where coolant is coming out of our thermostat housing. So we know that um, at the very top level of our block, we are completely full of coolant. We're not going to have any hot spots. So now we can bolt this down and continue to fill up our radiator and um, be confident that we're in good shape. What's, what's the one that I definitely fail, fail at? It's properly dressed. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and what are those? The rules to be a good driver. <laughs> I guess I'm not a good driver. The rule number one does not have accidents. 
What? I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> hey. All right, so closing down here tonight. Um, I think next time we're going to be able to start the vehicle. We only have a few more things left to do. Rebuild the fuel pump and um, we'll want to spin the engine over to get all the transmission fluid we poured down the cylinders to hopefully loosen anything up that might have been stuck. It really looks like everything's in pretty good shape. Obviously we don't want to put any of the spark plugs in until after we do that because we wouldn't want to hydro lock anything and it gives time for the oil pump to prime up the rest of the system. So I think uh, we got the battery hooked up, new oil and everything, the coolant's in it. Um, I think it's good enough to just bump the starter and see if our starter's in good shape and I think that'll end our video here today. All right, so bumping this thing over, we're actually testing out a lot of stuff here. Making sure the clutch is loose. I think that's neutral. So if I can remember right, we have ignition there we go looks like our battery voltage came up and our starter is actually this little foot switch get our old radio out of the way now some of you commented that there's more pieces to this and it is indeed behind the passenger seat so that's a pretty cool unit there old motorola walkie talkie setup so anyway we're just going to lightly bump this And I think our switch might be rusted in place here. All right, so I think we finally got this figured out here after tapping around on our switch. It looks like everything's in good shape. So with our clutch in here, um, it seems like when I press on it with my foot, I don't get the best angle. But if I use my thumb, it's going to make a liar out of me again. There we go. So that's good news.